Vijal, tell us how many years has Thomas Oliver been established and how many years have you been working at the King's Group? Well, Thomas Oliver was actually established in 2009, so we've nearly been running for about 10 years now. We've been growing rapidly in the last couple of years. I actually joined there in 2016, but I started off in King's Group, the sister company, in 2014. So I built up my client base, I switched over to Thomas Oliver. What sort of financial services Thomas Oliver provide? Well, at Thomas Oliver, we actually work with one of the biggest financial networks called OpenWork. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't expect anyone to know who that is. But with 40 years worth of knowledge and experience, they allow us to cover and offer financial products of mortgages, annuities, insurance, protection, pensions, investments and fund managers. Is it the only provider that you use, OpenWorks? No, OpenWork is basically the network that allows us to use the providers. So to give you an example, for annuities, we use LV and Prudential, Insurance, Zurich, LV, Legal and General, Investments, Octopus, Canada Life, Pensions, Zurich and Scottish Widows, and I could go on. There's numerous, but I don't want to bore you. Vijal, what do you think makes Thomas Oliver brand different from your competitors? Honestly, our service. If you read any of our reviews or have any friends or family that have dealt with us, they will tell you our customer service is phenomenal because of the way we pride ourselves. We also have the awards to back it up. So we have the Bronze Mortgage Esters Award, which is exceptional considering we only have 10 to 12 advisors. What is the Esters Award? So it's an estate agency award, actually. So it's mortgages within estate agency. Now, our sister company, King's Group, is obviously the estate agents. So all these... And the award was for? The award was for best mortgage advisor in the South East category, medium chain. That's very impressive. <laughs> it, it, it is, actually. If you consider we only have 12 advisors, we're going out there against companies that have 300 advisors. So the fact we're coming bronze, and our sister company came, came silver as well, so we're competing. The people that got gold have 300 advisors, so they're getting a lot more reviews than our 12 advisors. But because of the quality of our reviews, that's what puts us up there. Is it because usually when the consumers deal with large companies, you become a number? Whereas if you deal with a smaller company, obviously, you know, they pay more attention to you as a consumer. They take better care of you. Yeah. So basically, as you're growing, it's, it's, I would say it's easy to get to the top because if you focus on your clients, do everything 100%, you will get there. The hardest thing is to grow, expand, employ people and maintain that service. That's where it becomes really difficult. And that's what we've been doing over the last two, three years. So although we may only have 12 advisors today, three, four years ago, we had a lot less. We only recruit quality. That is what we stand for. It's a quality service. So it does mean we grow slower, but we maintain all our clients and we grow properly. I will challenge you now. What would you say is your clientele retained percentage then? Statistically, I would say 99%. To give you an example. So, Seriously? Yes. Um, I <laughs> it's know that... not often that you hear this. I do respect the fact that you say statistically it's 99%. It's impressive, very impressive indeed. Yeah, because what, what we actually do with our customers, let's say they call us up and, you know, they need a mortgage and they happen to refix it and they refixed it with the bank. That doesn't mean we've lost the client because they may still use us for pensions and investments. The reason they refixed it with the bank is because it was a quick two second phone call. And we may have even advised them to do that because it's quicker and it, wouldn't, it would actually benefit the client because the circumstances have changed. You just mentioned mortgages now. The services Thomas Oliver offers mortgages. The property market is stagnant for over a year now. In fact, many industry specialists talk about a property crash. Carl Knipe, founder and partner of the King's Group, your <laughs> boss, <laughs> with over 30 years experience in the industry, and of course, LGS host of the property show, dedicated a whole program in July to the UK property crash. Higher stamp duty and Brexit seem to be the main causes of the crash. What is your opinion? Will the property market recover before the Brexit or soon after? Good question. I think it's one that everyone's got on their minds as well. I think we're starting to see the ramifications of Brexit now, especially as it's getting closer and the rumours are spreading about all the things that needs to change and how bad it's going to be. No one knows how bad it's going to be, but this is what's in the media because bad news sells. 
So, in the short term, I do think we will suffer because of uncertainty. It's the uncertainty that's killing us because no one wants to buy or invest when they don't know what the future holds. Long term wise, I actually think we will be better for it because we won't be bound by EU regulations and our financial markets and growth are a lot more advanced than anywhere in Europe. Now, this may not be the reason we voted out of Brexit, but I generally think long term we'll be better off for it. And I think you'll see the property market boom again like it always has done long term wise. But for now, we are in a bit of a rut and they're being compounded by the stamp duty changes that you mentioned tax changes, buy-to-let changes. However, it doesn't mean you can't get an amazing deal on a property right now. How long do you think this for now period will last? Oh, this of being very, very challenging <laughs> indeed. <laughs> this all depends how long Brexit takes and what kind of deal we get with Brexit. I think as soon as you see the Brexit deal emerge and we know exactly what's happening, I think, you know, a Do year you think that we will know what's happening in March 2019 or it will take probably months after that or years after that until oh, I, I really the hope we know by March 2019, to but, be honest, <laughs> because we, it's been going around for the last couple of months have been horrendous. All, all I keep seeing in the headlines is Theresa May announces a Brexit deal, won't change her stance. That, that's all that, that I've got so far from this. We need to know exactly what's happening. I believe by March we'll know exactly what's happening, whether we get a good deal or not. But the good thing about that is we'll have certainty and then you'll see in a year or two everything will go back to normal and pick back up because long-term properties are the way to go. In a year or two. So until then... <laughs> until then... We're all going to suffer. I mean, especially the, the, the property owners. Yeah, we're suffering at the minute, to be honest. We are suffering. Yeah. But there are some markets that are booming. If you go down by the coast in some places, those properties have gone up because everyone's getting better value for money down there and they don't mind buying down there. It's the high net worth market that's really, really coming down at the minute. So if you've got a lot of money, those people are waiting and I don't blame them. We shall see what is going to happen and the effect the Brexit is going to have. You also offer retirement and inheritance tax planning services. What sort of age you would suggest people to start making such plans? And the other question that I will put to you is, do you think people are educated enough about why they need to have such arrangements? I don't think there is enough education into any real-life finance matters that arise. And I think this is a major problem at school level. I think that's where it all starts. You don't learn enough about the real world and what finance implications there are out there. I think... Some people don't even know inheritance tax exists, first of all. So I, I know this because I talk to some of my friends and they're like, what do you mean inheritance tax? We don't have a basic understanding. That's the first problem. But in terms of when you should start, I think you should start as early as possible. When you first have your first proper job in your 20s, that's when you should start saving, to be honest. But that does not mean pay into a pension blindly. That's what does it mean? It means actually realise what your pension encompasses. So basically, when you start a job, they naturally have to put you into a pension. And they will give you a handbook on it. Read that handbook. See if that pension's right for you. If it's a nest pension, then you may want to speak to a financial advisor. And the reason I'm saying this sort of stuff is because financial advisor is great. But when you first start in your 20s, you don't actually, unless you have a serious amount of money, you're not going to start with a financial advisor. You're going to pay into a pension, but please read up on it. If you don't think it's good, then speak to a financial advisor and set it up with him. But what we have is just, you have to pay into a pension. Okay, done. How, how's that going to help anyone? How is that going to fund your retirement? How is that going to pay for what you need in later life? We don't know whether we need a financial advisor. We never thought of. Nobody told us that it's best to have your own personal financial advisor to help you making decisions put, put it this way whenever you you do something you want to speak to an expert when you're dealing with your own money and if you don't know too much about it you should be speaking to a financial advisor otherwise don't expect your retirement to pay an awful lot there are a few scandals surrounding pension schemes how would a financial advisor assist the consumer well of course a financial advisor can assist they'll be immediately able to find out if the pension pot that you're going to put in is a scandal or not, because 
We work with OpenWork, so we only provide pension providers through OpenWork. They're 100% trustworthy. You've heard of them before. We're part of the biggest financial network available. Whereas if you've gone direct, or if you've searched something online, or this guy claiming to be a financial advisor is trying to get you to put your pension money somewhere, it may not be what you think. And I'll give you a real life example. So one of our secretaries was being hounded by a supposed financial advisor. He was literally waiting on her doorstep for her to come home, trying to get her to invest in his pension pot. Now, she didn't really trust him or, and, and, and started to get annoyed. So she basically... Why didn't she come to you? You are a financial advisor. Well, she did because she was my secretary in the office. So she started to realise and she goes, Vish, can you help me? Now, I'm not qualified for pensions and investments at that stage. And we didn't have anyone that was qualified at that moment. So I handed her over to my dad. Mm -hmm. My dad immediately found out that that pension pot was a scam. Your dad is a financial advisor. Yes, mm -hmm. he's a wealth manager and he's got great experience. I think he's got a fellowship as well. So he truly knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And basically, he found out the pension pot that she was going to invest into was a complete scam. There was Google forums everywhere. He, he basically printed everything out, showed it to her, and she couldn't believe it. That could have been her pension pot completely gone. It's scary. It's really scary. Can you imagine for somebody who worked all his life yeah, I... and all of a sudden, you know, realizes that so th everything he worked for is gone? And that's what I mean. Speak to an expert. Don't just go online. Don't just listen to these phone calls that you may randomly get. And also, with a financial advisor, check his credentials. It will be online. It will be on the FCA register. He should have a company. He should have a website to back it up. So at Thomas Oliver, you can see that all about us. So you know where we are. You know we're reputable. If you just met a financial advisor and, you know, you're believing his word, then it, it doesn't make sense. This is your whole life savings. You offer so many services through Thomas Oliver. You also offer protection and insurance policies. Some people think that insurance in fact is a wasting of money they are forced to have it whether for business or personal reasons obviously they go online they search for the cheapest premium rate what is your response to this <laughs> well you pay for what you get and i can't emphasize that enough you're not forced to have these insurances so if you're gonna get the cheapest insurance don't even bother getting it because it's unlikely to pay out Cheap and cheerful, love. Yeah, cheap and cheerful. <laughs> that's that's what that's what we call it. And it's it's there's no point, honestly. It's it, there is no point to having it. If you truly want it, you will want a tailor made recommendation. I'll give you a couple of examples. So we've had phone calls in to our offices where the husband or partners have passed away or had a critical illness. And obviously they've, they've called up because they may not even know if the client has a policy or not. Yeah. So most often than not, the clients have a policy. We sort out everything. We make the claim for them. Happy days, they get a payout. So at least they're not financially distressed. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't wish this on anyone. Obviously, the emotions involved must be traumatic. Absolutely. I've also dealt with the other experience of, remember I said that they may not know if their partner has taken out a policy. They've called up to find out if their partner has taken out a policy, and they haven't. That is the worst phone call in the world, because to tell them that, no, sorry, your partner didn't take out a policy, which was obviously to probably save money, and now that family's in distress, what do you do? A disaster. This is a catastrophe for a family. Exactly. And this is what I mean. If you're going to want to protect your loved ones, to protect your family, you'll speak to a financial advisor because they'll tailor recommend the solution. You're not just going online. They will tailor make the policy, actually, based on your needs. Exactly. On, yeah. Because everyone has different needs. So, for instance, I've got clients where the man earns over 100000 the partner's at home looking after the kids. So what we do is we protect the husband's income. We get him income protection. And then we also protect them both for life cover and then we protect them both for critical illness cover. Now you're probably thinking, but what if the, the person at home looking after the family, she doesn't need cover? Wrong. Because if she passes away, then who looks after the kids? That's a childcare cost. That's an added expense you're not used to. That life cover will come in use. Same with a critical illness cover. To be honest, everyone should have critical illness cover. If you have a heart attack or stroke, you're going to want to pay, pay for some medical bills. You're going to want to at the end of the day, if you haven't got long to live, God forbid, then you're going to want some money to enjoy your life as well. There is 
so much to insurances and different policies. There's different policies out there and we don't have enough time to go through them all. But this is what I mean. If you're going online, are you telling me you're researching all of this and you're finding out all of this different information? Because I don't think so. No, you don't, certainly not. We all lead a very busy life, hectic work schedule. We don't have time to think even about the things that you just mentioned. But of course, we think about it when it's too late, when disaster strikes. And you're right, you're absolutely right. You have to think well in advance, regardless of the age that you are. Obviously, insurance is essential to have. Yeah, and it's, it's one of those where, look, a financial advisor can not only save you time, you know what you're getting. And in the worst comes to worst, let's say the financial advisor did something wrong. He's covered by indemnity insurance. You you have someone to go to. So you to. can go after him, yeah, huh? They exactly. Can chase I'm, him. I'm not promoting that, by the way. I'm, I'm sorry for my fellow <laughs> financial advisors. But what I'm saying is, you know, you're everything's safe. backed up. You're safe, yeah. I understand what you're saying. The other question that I have for you, Vizal, is many of our audience in the UK live in areas where the King's Group have branches. Do you work with great clients? I actually have a lot of great <laughs> clients. And in fact, I'm very diverse. Um, so let me tell you a bit about myself. So in my family, you may be surprised to know, I have an Irish uncle, a Scottish uncle, a Persian uncle, an English and Greek auntie. Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so we're very, very diverse. Very exciting. Yeah, actually, it makes for great entertainment. Um, <laughs> I think the family's got a bit of a drinking problem, but we won't go into that. Um, <laughs> What, what I'm trying to say is I don't judge depending on race because my family never have. You can look at, you know, who yeah, we all of are. of course. And to be honest, I'm a British Indian living in North London <laughs> where I went to Southgate School where most of my friends are Greek and Turkish. So it's kind of, I'm naturally involved with Greek clients. And the reason I get on so well with them is because they're all about culture and family values. Yeah. And I there are similarities with your background, I suppose. Obviously, obviously you understand this because your, your culture background is very similar to ours in a way. Exactly. You know what? The, the Greek people are very much about family. Indian people are very much about family. And even Turkish people are very much about... Everyone's about family. And the good thing about London is... That's true. It, it's a multicultural... We are very system. much about family. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's what I love. That's what I love. Because yeah. nothing's more important than family. Health and family are the main things. So I know we're talking about Absolutely. wealth and all of this. I agree with you 100%. <laughs> and I'm sure, like every other Greek, who will agree with you 100% on this point. Exactly. And I think what the good thing about being in London, multicultural society. So people are getting used to interacting with each other a lot more. And we're actually mixing cultures. Hence, my family is from everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Vijal, thank you for being with us today. I thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. I would also like to thank you on behalf of the London Creek Radio for offering to our community the property show, which, of course, has been well received by our audience. Thank you once again for being the sponsor of The Property Show and for being with us today. Thank you. It's been a great pleasure and I hope it continues. <laughs>